Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of The Ultimate Iron Man. We kind of recently got back into doing Slayer, and last video kind of ended up being a Thermi video because we got a bunch of Thermi tasks. Um, we did get 1kq task, so we got all these wines of Zamrak, which actually we have to use up in just a minute here. But we are back into doing Slayer now. The task that we just got is a Grotesque Guardians task, or we got Gargoyles. Um, so that's what we're going to be starting off with today, well, in just a bit after we use up all these wines. You know, with this amount of Dwarf Feeds that we have, that's only like 5 to 10 more kq tasks, which actually I guess that kind of is a lot of kq. Um, but once we use all these up, I don't even know if I'll keep a stack of Dwarf Weeds after this, because I mean, even with what we have now, it's probably enough range pots to last like forever, really. But I mean, since I have the Dwarf Reads already, I may as well eventually use them up. But yeah, I'm going to go die now, and then we can start making all those potions. Okay, that's going to be the last of the range potions made. 720 three-dose potions. We'll make them all into one dose if we have enough GP here, which we do. Over 2,000 more range pot doses. I have to go get a looting bag, and then we'll go set up for Grotesque Guardians. Oh, and it looks like we gained about 117k Herblore XP from these potions. Grotesque Guardians is a hybrid boss, so I'll be using melee and range. Um, but because I'm a UIM, I'm going to want as few switches as possible, so I'm going to switch the Ferocious Gloves um, back into the leather to put them in the bag, and I'll be using Barrow's Gloves. And it would be better to use the Brimstone Ring normally, but as a UIM, I can't just bank my Ring of Suffering. And this is untradeable, and you can't put untradeables into the looting bag, so I'll be using the Suffering over the Brimstone Ring, which really makes me question why I'm even keeping this. I think the main thing is going to be for Vorkath, but it's such a niche use that I really don't know how much longer I'll be holding on to this for. Um, it would be probably the first item I would drop, even before the Elder Mole, because I really do like this for KQ. But, speaking of the Brimstone Ring, here's a word from today's sponsor. Imagine this is you, but in internet form. This is why you need protection. NordVPN hides your location and protects your data by allowing you to connect to over 5,200 servers in more than 60 countries. Nord will block malware-ridden websites, it prevents DDoS attacks when you're gaming, and you can use it to unlock content or view websites that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see in your country. You can connect to NordVPN on mobile as well, which is important if you're in a public setting like at a coffee shop or an airport. Nord has double data encryption, they let you have up to six connections at once, they have 24-7 customer support, and Nord offers a 30-day money-back guarantee so you can try it out and see if it's for you. And in my opinion, it's always best to protect yourself before something bad happens, not after it's too late. Nord currently has a huge discount on their two-year plan, plus it comes with a bonus gift. If you bundle their VPN with Nord Pass, their secure password manager, and Nord Locker, their secure cloud storage service, you can get even more discounts. So go to nordvpn.com slash wildmudkip and use coupon code wildmudkip at checkout and start protecting yourself today. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Here's what the inventory looks like. Um, I didn't fish these dark crabs, by the way. I just had them left over from a KQ task. Uh, so the main differences from uh, in terms of gear of what I had before, I actually have this picture because I keep a picture of all my old setups. We have the Tacits instead of the Varric Skirt, we have a Vernic instead of the Dragon Defender, and we now have Super Combats instead of just not bringing anything. Although, I might end up putting the Super Combats and maybe even the Range Pots into the Looting Bag because I feel like it might be worth the time to just have longer trips by being able to bring a couple more Prayer Pots. Or actually, that'd be like, I'd save two spots here and I'd save these two spots. So I'd have four extra inventory spots if I didn't bring these potions, which I mean four extra prayer pods would extend the trips by a lot. So I'll try it with these and see how it goes. Oh yeah, I forgot to take out the range cape as well. So um, yeah, one less food. There's, uh, there's the setup for real. And as for the collection log, like with a lot of bosses, we just need the pet and the jar. We got 1,060 KC. And if we take a look at the high scores, we're currently rank 4. I think we used to be rank 3, maybe, but um, either way, after this task, uh, we will be reclaiming rank 3, unless this person gets a bunch of KC. But yeah, cool, let's uh, get started with the task now. See, okay, we're on the first kill back. That's actually a really good drop with Addy Bars. It drops super combats and ranging pots, which makes me feel like if I'm gonna get these, like, probably every trip or every other trip anyways, which would last me for the rest of the trip, What's even the point of bringing them with me when I could just bring more prayer pots with me to start the trip and then probably get these drops during the trip itself? So after this trip, I think I'll end up putting uh, these into the looting bag. This game is such a troll, dude. See, this is the kind of stuff that happens when you're bossing. You get like a supply drop, or in this case, you get an elite clue on the first kill of a trip that's supposed to be like 10 to 15 KC. And there's the elite casket. Super combat potion, ranging potion, super combat potion, ranging potion. This one is going to put us at 1100 GGKC. 
This is why I love the SGS, so nice. That was a really fast kill. It could be a PB. Wait, wait, it was 146, so we beat it by like a tick, I guess. 1200 KC. And that is the end of the task. 1203 KC. And we didn't get a single unique that whole task, which I think might be like the first time it's happened. Usually I get at least like a couple. But you can see here, before I even log off, uh, we are already rank three on the high scores. Before anything else though, I need to see what Slayer task we're gonna get next. Okay, well, uh, it's been a while since we've done Serb. Last time I did Serb, uh, it didn't count as a demon, but now it counts as a demon, so we can use Arc Light. I'm so used to using the Blowpipe there, so have to get used to using Melee again. Before we get to Serb, though, there's a couple items I was holding onto from the Grotesque Guardians, which we have to use up first, which is the Mithril Bars and the Addy Bars. Um, I need to make these into Addy Darts, but I don't know the exact amount. I probably should have checked before I did this, because now I'm going to have to take out the Blowpipe and check how many Addy Darts I have in here. I was kind of hoping I could use that hammer I just got from Camdazal, but I'm going to have to have this equipped instead, so we'll find a future use for the equipable hammer. But yeah, I'll be making these bars into darts, and then with the leftover bars, after we make the darts, I'll make them into plate bodies and alk them. And then same with the mithril bars, I'll make those into plate bodies and alk those as well. should probably grab out the alk runes too. We only use like 1k darts, I guess, from that last task. Okay, we're only making like 1k darts. And from alking all this stuff that we made, we got over 1.1 million GP on top of the couple million plus GP that we got from the actual task itself. Okay, let's put all these in the blowpipe, and the blowpipe is once again filled up. You know, I was kind of thinking about this, Amethyst Darts um, should probably most likely be coming out pretty soon, and once they do, I mean, I probably won't even use Addy Darts anymore, I'll probably just use Amethyst Darts, which is going to be really nice because that would be something to do with my AFK downtime when I need Darts, I could just go to Amethyst. But on top of that, I feel like I don't really need range as much anymore. I guess Serb is like a really big example of that, how it became a demon, so now I can just use melee, and you may have noticed like the melee Melee upgrades I've made recently, like how I decided to keep the Ferocious Gloves instead of the Pigasian Crystal, which I never even got Ranger Boots for yet. Getting Tacids to keep over Varric Skirt. Um, even just keeping Primordials on a UIM is a bit of a controversial topic in the UIM community, especially with the Dragon Boots with the Ornament Kit being storable in the POH, which I don't have the Ornament Kit yet, but just thinking of how to prioritize inventory space is really interesting, I think, for UIM. It's just really weird because I feel like Melee, at least for me, is kind of taking a bigger priority, which I guess is kind of exaggerated on UIM because you need to pick out like what's most important for you rather than having like niche items in your bank. Speaking of prioritizing space on a UIM, the time has come to drop the brimstone ring. As I've mentioned a lot of times, due to the fact that you can't put untradeables in the looting bag and the fact that Ring of Suffering is untradeable in its current form, um, anytime I want to use the brimstone ring, I would have to keep the suffering in my inventory, which just like just makes it seem really not worth it for pretty much almost every situation. So because of that, it is time that we're going to be dropping it over to the main. Oh, by the way, here's the value of all the loot I dropped over from this last Grotesque Guardians task. If you're curious, it's a little bit over 2 million GP. I really don't feel like this is something I'm going to regret. All right, goodbye Brimstone Ring. Cool, now we have another uh, spot freed up in the looting bag. I originally just kept it for raids because when you're in raids, or raids 1 at least, you can keep whatever you want in Hispori because it's a safe death. So at the time, I was able to just keep my suffering in Hispori, but not for pretty much any other PVM activity in the game, you can't do that. Like I said before, for the weapon that we're going to use, we're going to use the Arc Light, and we're actually going to use it on Stab because Serb is like extra weak to Stab. Otherwise, in most situations, you would normally want to use it on Slash. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the Amulet of the Dark right here. This is a really, really interesting, really funky, really spaghetti code item. You can see when I right click it, it says full, but if I equip this and I take any damage, that's going to be degraded, which means it's going to be untradeable because at the moment, it is tradable if it's been untouched like it is right now, um, which means I can currently put it in the looting bag, but it kind of sucks for this clue step because I believe this is a combat relayed step, so you have to equip this and the second you do the emote, you get attacked and that degrades it. So I haven't done this clue step yet, and I don't know if I want to do it because of that reason, because this amulet is really annoying to get back for UIM. And the thing that's really weird about this amulet is that if it is degraded and you die with it, it turns to dust, it just completely disappears. 
I haven't tested this yet, but from what I've been told, and I believe the people that have told me this, that when the amulet is full and you die with it, even if it's in the looting bag and if you die to his or whatever, it will remain intact in its full form. So there's multiple reasons to not want this amulet to ever become degraded, which hopefully never happens to me. Hopefully I never like accidentally equip it or just forget and do the clue step or something. Because it would be a bit of a pain to get back, but then again, it would be like an excuse to go do Shades of Morton, which I need to do for a bunch of collection log stuff, which I've been putting off for a while, but we'll get to that at some point. It's kind of nice though, because previously when I was using range, I had to keep the Dragon Defender, well now a Vernic Defender, in my inventory because there's nowhere else to put it, but now that I'm actually using melee, I don't have to have that spot taken up by the defender, nor do I have to have it taken up by that amulet because I have it fully charged. That is why I freed up the spot in the looting bag, by the way, because as you can see, it's completely full. Although now that I think about it, Syrup does drop Zami wines, so maybe I will keep those in my inventory. Um, instead of like this shark in the corner here or something. Um, as for the drops that we have slash need from Serb, I have everything except the pet. This is pretty much my favorite realistic pet for me to get in the game. Um, the Bloodhound's my favorite, but that's not really realistic. This is like the most realistic pet that I could get that's actually like my favorite one, so... One day, we'll get it, we'll get it. It could be today, but most likely not. Wait, what was the KC again? Because it's been a while since I've done Syrup. We're at 1,652 KC, and then I guess in this case, instead of having to worry about upkeeping with the darts, we instead will eventually have to worry about upkeeping with the arc light charges. So we have pretty much a full arc light, pretty much 10k. So I'm curious to see how many charges we use for one Serb task. Hopefully we can just passively upkeep it just by getting like the AFK tasks in the catacombs. I'm excited to see how much the arc light shreds through Serb though. It's supposed to be like really, really, really good. Oh yeah, wait, I meant to buy a DDS for the spec weapon. Oh well, I mean we're here already, so we'll just go ahead and do the trip. We got the arc light spec anyways. Oh, another thing, since the last time I've done Serb, Serb now drops those special ashes, the infernal ashes. So how much XP do we get for these? 110, okay. And we got actual ashes as well. I'm not gonna bring the ash sanctifier though. It kind of seems like a waste of an inventory spot. Oh, do I know how to do this thing still? Kind of, maybe. Um, I'm not gonna waste the inventory spot on that. It's not really difficult to bury the, the three or four ashes they get per trip, you know? You know, looking at it now, honestly, I probably should have used the SGS as a spec weapon. I don't know what's actually best, but I feel like that could be more useful than a DDS here. All right, not bad. First try, we got a five kill trip right here. Um, I forgot what I was getting with range. I have to like go back in my videos and check what I said, but I feel like it was like three to four kills per trip. I think five was like a lucky trip for me. And the fact that we just got this first try and prayer actually ended up being the bottleneck there. So I could probably bring five prayer pots because I was like purposely tanking hits. So I wouldn't have to use as much prayer. So I think five prayer pots should be good. Arc light was freaking shredding through sir. Based on this though, it looks like we did go through like 20 charges per kill. <sighs> That's kind of a lot, actually. Another pretty big key takeaway for doing Serb, especially on Iron Man, is the fact that you go through so many freaking doses of prayer potion. I think overall, I probably average like three to four doses of prayer per KC, which could like wipe out my whole entire prayer pot stack just going dry for the pet. And if that happens, then I don't know, I guess one day I'll have to go back to Master Farmers or something. But I'll try to not think about that. Ugh, skilling. And kind of struggling by a bit to get this, but we got a six kill trip right here. Also decide for the DDS dude, it's gonna be SGS or bust next time in the future. I'm not gonna like redo his for just to get the SGS out, but now I know for the future. And then I'd also have one more free uh, looting bag spot too if I took the SGS out for while I'm doing Serb. I'm also like five per levels higher from the last time I did Serb, so that kind of helps a bit too. I discover that after each trip, if I do get any GP from alking any items, I can just put that GP into the coffer in the POH or into Ferox. So well, I probably just all fit into the POH coffer, so I I could uh, instead replace that spot with the Wines of Zamorak for now. Dang, dude, I don't know why so many people complain that they use so many prayer pots at Serb. I literally profited potions. And there's 1.7k Serb, Casey. I spent a while fishing last night, as you could see by all these aura scales, and we got an easy clue from it. Is that new for the POH? May not be new for the log, but... It is new for the POH, nice. Oh, we got the unique, but we have the jar already. Yeah. That's one out of 2k and the pet is one out of 3k, so it happens, it happens. So yeah, we got the Jar of Souls really early on the account. I think it was like 150 KC or something. Um, as you can see, I already have it set up as the display because I think it looks really cool. I think the only other one that we have actually is the Kraken one. Yeah, those are the only two that we have, so... A bit annoying getting a dupe, but you know, when you do this much KC, dupes are bound to happen, but there's the collection log now. I'm gonna alk it out of spite. Yeah. 
I'll teach the game. Oh, remember a couple of videos ago I was talking about this new step, this really stupid step. I'm not going to build a stash unit. It's probably like one of the only steps where I can easily or I already have all the items for, but I'm not going to build the stash unit just because it's dumb. I'm not going to get like extra pieces of all these. Just going to instead grab all three of them out of the POH every single time. Looks so stupid, dude. There's 1800 Serb KC and there's the end of the Serb task. We got 1841 KC now and then the only unique that we got during the task was a duplicate jar of souls. Compared to the blowpipe though, I didn't do the DPS calcs. Um, but just in terms of like how it felt, it felt pretty similar, maybe even a bit faster. Uh, I think overall I averaged 20 or even maybe a little bit over 20 kills per hour. Oh dude, here's the painful part though. We're going to check how many charges we have left on the arc light. 5.6k. Okay, I'm going to do some math here real quick. So over 4.3k charges for 189kc means that we used about 23 charges per Serb. That's kind of really annoying too because I really want to save those charges for Demonic Gorillas. I mean, granted, we do still have quite a few charges left, but... Um, I did recently unblock Demonics. I do want to get the two necklaces. The average trip I did was probably like 5kc. I mean, some trips I got unlucky and did like 3 or 4kc. Other trips I got really lucky and got like the supply drops and got like 6 or 7kc. But I'd say overall probably 5kc. But let's grab, oh, let me grab the Slayer Cape actually. All right, that kind of works out because I kind of want to AFK and chill for a bit. I don't know, like I kind of want to do Sire, but at the same time, like there's nothing I really want to get from there. I'll do it at some point eventually, but I don't know, I just don't want to do it yet. I was thinking like maybe when I'm AFKing at some point, I could, instead of fishing or woodcutting, I could go to the catacombs and just AFK jellies with melee. And that way I could get more ancient shards to recharge the arc light and get hard clues from them that way too. I know it'd be way faster, of course, to barrage them, but if I'm just AFKing anyways, I mean, that could be something to just passively work on. Plus, like I said before, when I get tasks like this in the catacombs, they're just AFK tasks for when I have to edit and eat dinner. Um, those will also be a passive source of shards, assuming I get three, because you need three shards at a time. Oh, by the way, this is going to be really dumb too. Okay, so here's the temple six hour record for uh, Cerberus. You can see I was ranked two with 117 KC. Just gonna log off here real quick. Okay, let's see. 127 KC beat my own record. It's just kind of really annoying to get like a good KC record for serve because every time you leave, there's like a decent chance that you're gonna lose your spot when you get back. I just got very lucky not having hop worlds for like the last five hours of doing serve. Thermi. Great. We did manage to get some ancient shards, so every three shards is 1,000 charges for the arc light, so we'll just toss those on in there. We get a thousand more charges, which I guess helps a little bit. And uh, one more thing before we move on, wanted to show the high scores. Before this task, we were rank 17, but now we moved up to rank 11 after one serve task. Moment of truth, is the Amulet of the Darn going to be in Arno? Because if it's not, I'm going to have a not so fun night tonight. I will not be happy. There it is, yay, okay. Uh, and then we have 180 wines we got from Serb, so I guess before anything else, we're gonna quickly make 180 ranging potions. Because you know I didn't have enough ranging potions already, so there's uh, 180 more three dose potions. Oh, we have got a big, big update today. This is not just Fosani's Nightmare. Ignore this propaganda. This is a lot more than just Fosani's Nightmare. So if we scroll past this small section up here, you'll see Equipment Rebalanced Range Meta. They added the new bow into the game, there's a lot of stuff in here, so I'm going to try to go through it really fast. They added the new bow, which comes from the gauntlet, but it's not storable for UYM. There's a stash unit that requires only a crystal bow and nothing else, and other accounts can store the new F bow in there, but UYMs have an exception where they are not able to store the bow in there. Uh, they buffed crystal armor. The blowpipe nerf has come into the game. With how the blowpipe works now, it'll be worse on monsters that have high defense, but on monsters with low defense, um, there shouldn't be too much change. Which is kind of funny because I was thinking maybe I should start doing range serve again so I could save the arc light charges, but um, that's not going to be happening. <laughs> um, and then along with the blowpipe nerf, they added amethyst darts into the game, which are going to be pretty much on par with rune. They're going to have two more strength over rune. Um, but that really shouldn't add a max hit. And as you can see right here, there's a pretty big difference between Adamant and Rune 17 to 26. When I woke up today and saw this update, I was thinking, wait, are Amethyst darts going to be tradable? Because if they're not, that might be an issue because you can't put untradables into the looting bag. So I'm going to have to actually check this after I go over the update. They've given the Shazing armor range bonuses, which I assume is to balance out the blowpipe. Yeah, wait, they reduced the accuracy by 30, right? Because it used to be 60, now it's 30. So they're buffing the armor by plus 30. So it 
balances out the blowpipe then for killing shamans. ACB got a little bit of a buff for the special attack and the proc with the bolts. Uh, Crystal Bow range strength increased a bit, DHCB nerfed a bit, and then over here, I am very glad I kept my buckler because they gave it a range strength bonus of 10. I'll have to do some DPS calcs later because maybe that would be worth using uh, ACB and buckler for demonics possibly over blowpipe. And then same thing for killing Zami, I might actually maybe try the range method for Zami, we'll see. Because of the blowpipe nerf, they decreased the hit points of the healers at Zuck and the rangers in the Inferno by 5 health. They added a bunch of recolors for the blade of Saldor. There's a bunch of other kind of not too important changes here. Um, the Zealot's armor, I still have to get that, but they gave it a prayer bonus so that it's in between Monk's robes and Proselyte now, and it's storable in the POH, so I really should get it. They added a recolor for the Seracnus pet. I do want to go back to Seracnus. That'd be really cool. I would keep the blue one because blue's my favorite color. Oh, they changed the Ash Sanctifier, so you need 10 death runes for 100 charges rather than one death rune, which when that first came out, I was saying in the video that that's like crazy. That one death rune gave 100 charges. I mean, even 10 death runes for 100 charges I feel like still isn't even that bad. Oh, they made an animation for Scattering Ashes. I was thinking before, it's kind of lame that it was the same as the Bone Bearing animation. Okay, uh, I think that's pretty much it then. So there's a lot of freaking stuff packed into one update. Okay, let's head over to the Amethyst and test this out. I have to grab a chisel actually, because I want to see if it's tradable. I could easily just like check probably on the wiki or on my main, like using the GE or something, but I'd rather just go there and game and test it out myself. Just gonna buy a pick here real quick. I only want to mine one, okay? Oh, dude, it's probably gonna be hella packed too. Although then again, they kind of announced this a while ago, so maybe the hype has died down. We'll see in just a second here. Oh, there's... I mean, I haven't been here, so I don't know if that's a lot of people, but I, I feel like that's a lot of people for how small this place is. What a great name. I look so dumb here mining with the Mithril pick. Okay, here's our first bit of Amethyst. I think the first Amethyst I've ever mined on the account, so we should have... Was that voice crack? Uh, we should have a few different options here, so we'll make them into the Amethyst start tips, which requires 89 crafting for these, which we do have. Uh, we have 94 crafting, you get 60 crafting XP, you get 8 dart tips per Amethyst, and then even just to mine Amethyst itself requires 92 mining. Um, so let's go ahead and buy the feathers here, and then attach them. And we got, oh yeah, we got Fletching XP too. And then the moment of truth, if they're not tradable, I'm going to be so sad. Let's see. Oh, they are tradable. Oh, this is huge. Well, I guess it makes the Addy Darts I have just completely irrelevant. There's no point to having Addy Darts or like caring about Addy Bars anymore. No more AVNCs for the account. No more worrying about grotesque guardians tasks to upkeep the Addy Darts. It's all just Amethyst now for me. Okay, we'll finish off this video with the Thermi task. And then for next video, uh, we should get the Varrock Elite Diary done because that'll give us the extra perk from the armor for mining Amethyst. Um, so yeah, let's get back to Thermi and see if we can get the jar today. Whoa, dragon, wait, that's one out of 2k, that's the same rate as the jar, bro, and it's just gonna get out. That's so sad. And the very next kill is gonna put us at 1100 Thermi. Okay, I thought that was a D chain again. Oh, oh, dude, there it is. The <laughs> oh, we are done with Thermi forever, 1160 KC. I was reclined, dude, I was falling asleep in my chair. We got the jar from Sir before, and I was like, oh dang, that means I used up all my RNG, and now I'm going to go super dry. But nah, dude, we're, we're freaking done with Thermi forever. Oh, beautiful jar of pee. You could put it into the display here. And that's our third jar. Now we could uh, proudly show off the Thermi one. I think I'll keep this Thermi. Even though I prefer the Sir one, I just want to... Just want to enjoy it for a bit. So now when people come to my house and they ask to use the bathroom, I'll just be like, uh, one sec, I have to empty it real quick. Just kidding, I'm an Iron Man, no one can enter my house. Well, that came to a much more abrupt ending than I was expecting, uh, but yeah, let's, let's look at the collection log now. Look at it, it's beautiful, it's green again. We got everything done without getting a do pet, I'm surprised. Like, knowing my luck, I was honestly expecting to, like, probably get a second pet at some point, but nope. We're done with Thermi forever. Actually, I should probably stop making bold statements like that because when I say stuff like that, it probably makes it more likely for them to add some kind of tertiary drop, some other kind of new unique or extra transmog item for the pet or something like that. So uh, I'm not going back to Thermi until they add something new or something. Yeah. I was originally going to say at the end of this video that we go through all these boss tasks since we started doing Slayer again that we need the jar from and didn't get the jar. And then the one serve task I got, we got a duplicate jar from it. 
Um, but we kind of just made it up for it by getting the jar of smoke. I kind of wish it was like the KQ jar or something because it's a bit more of an annoying boss to grind out. But either way, I'm glad we got something new today. Oh, hey, yeah, uh, bathroom's around the corner. Next video, we're going to be taking a little bit of a break from Slayer because I want to work on some collection log stuff. I mentioned the diary stuff before. And UIM Bingo is still like about a week away. So I kind of want to save myself for doing Slayer then. And we'll take a little break and change up the pace a bit. But we're going to wrap up here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.